Bakshi is the strongest cavalry hero in Call of Dragons. And since today's patch, he is now available from the gold chest using your keys. So in today's video, we're going to go over his skills, his abilities, his talents pairing and all the kind of stuff that you need to know in order to get the max potential out of this amazing cavalry hero. So as I've said, uh, Bakshi is now available in the chest. It is the same percentage as all the other legendary heroes here. So 1%, which means that out of a hundred of these, uh, you know, you have a chance of getting one of these. Uh, so first of all, Bakshi is, uh, like I said, the best hero for cavalry, uh, along with Emrys, of course. So first pairing, Bakshi and Emrys, uh, they are the best combo of Cav in the game by far. And they're also the only two legendary heroes for cavalry in the game. So it kind of makes sense. Um, the reason that they're so good is especially because uh, they have very high skill damage factors. So Emrys, you know, 1500 damage here. And Bakshi would most likely be the primary because of his skill talent tree. And also bringing 1400 skill damage himself, which is a very, very high number when you pair him with Emrys. Um, his other ability here is HP bonus, meaning that you increase your own HP by 20% uh, whenever you cast a skill, which means it's almost a permanent 20% HP buff, which is very, very high stat especially since he's already doing so much damage with this ability in the first place. If you are going to be playing Bakshi, do not star him up at all. Don't give him any stars until this first skill is five points in. So basically until he looks like my Emrys without anything unlocked. Basically you wait until the first skill has five points in it and then you unlock their other stuff. Uh, this is a must because Bakshi's first skill is the best. Now, once you have unlocked the first skill at five skill points, you can go ahead and get every other skill unlocked because his second best skill is his fourth ability. Uh, it is by far his uh, most insane and RNG ability, meaning that when he's in battle, he will randomly gain one of these three buffs. Now, the first buff is attack and defense bonus of up to 30%, so 60% statistic. It is huge, 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 huge amounts. Um, otherwise, the other buff is rage accumulation speed bonus, 30%. Again, we spoke about how strong his and Emerson's skills are, uh, so it is very, very powerful. A rage accumulation in this game is insanely worth it. And the last one, a Spirit Siphon, is basically when he's launching normal attacks and he has this buff on, he will heal for uh, up to 200 uh, this is the worst of the three, but it's still, you know, a little bit of healing. It's not bad because he will launch normal attacks every second. Now, it says here every 10 seconds, so he will gain one of these buffs every 10 seconds, and the buff will last for 5 seconds. So, the healing factor will be about 1,200 per second for 5 seconds. Rage accumulations bonus within 30% for 5 seconds, and here a 60% stat for 5 seconds. Meaning that all of, all of the time he's fighting, 50% of the time he's buffed by something like this. Now, this is amazing. I, if you can get 5115, he would be, you know, really, really good. But as long as you have the first skill max, then obviously you unlock everything else and you hope that you get lucky and get this one as much as possible. Uh, his second ability is Peacekeeping, so absolutely nothing to do with anything other than when you're fighting Darklings and Dark Creatures and like Darkling Force, for example. And the last one here, uh, all cavalry gain uh, percentage HP bonus, so 10%, as well as physical attack bonus, 20%. So, you know, very good stats like this you know you get 20 percent hp here 10 percent hp here for calves very very powerful all in all now the last one the awakening uh it is basically the first ability boosted so instead of 1400 we go to 1500 and instead of 20 percent hp we go to 30 percent hp uh so a minor buff to the first skill you know very decent of course 100 damage factor is quite low but uh 10 percent hp is quite high uh, but you know he does not need to be maxed to be good uh five one whatever whatever here is good as long as you're using the first skill max and you get you know lucky here a little bit this is very good even this one is still very good with one point in uh, so he is very very powerful even if he's peacekeeping the rest that he has is so powerful that it doesn't matter now as i said uh his best pairing will most likely be emrys i mean that is definitely going to be emrys uh, there is nothing close. Emrys as secondary is most definitely the best choice as well. Uh, you would put Emrys as primary if you wanted to go mobility. Uh, but otherwise, because of uh, the skill talent tree here, uh, it is really, really hard to justify Emrys being first unless you want to really go fast because the skill talent tree will bring so much more to this combo who deal very high skill damage uh, when they're paired that way. Now, other choices, of course, Alistair, uh, the only other real cav uh, hero in this game. Um, you know, very low damage factor here, but it is AoE. Uh, more buff, more physical attack buffs, you know, a defense bonus when attacking cities. So this could be good if you're rallying a city. But 
uh, you know, it's not really about that. This is also pretty good. Basically, everything on this kit is good. It will make the pair tankier, uh, but obviously not something uh, that is as good as Emrys, but still very, very powerful uh, combo. No matter how your uh, Alistair looks, it will work fine. Now, no matter uh, what you choose, in my opinion, uh, a 5111 Emrys is going to be better than an Alistair. Uh, but if you have your Lester completely maxed out, uh, this is quite powerful. So when you do have this, you know, you could uh, consider this instead of a 5111 Emrys. But in any case, uh, Emrys with the first ability here is really, really powerful. Now, the key reason I'm saying is because of the skill talent tree. So let's go look at the skill talent tree, uh, you know, from another hero. But obviously, it's the same talent tree. Uh, this ability here is going to be one of the main reasons why you go skill. Uh, you do 8% more damage uh, for your deputy's next rage ability once you cast a rage ability. Basically meaning that your um, Emrys will be secondary to a uh, backshear and meaning that his 1500 damage skill will be 8% boosted. Uh, so that is very powerful because 8% damage is very high number in a game like this where all the percentages are like 1 or 2% attack, 3% defense, which equate to like less than 1% damage every time. So this is huge, very, very huge, especially because we've seen that there is Rage Duration bonus on his kit, meaning that he casts his skills often. And that is another thing here. For example, you have things like this that grant your Legion uh, Rage when you're attacking. Uh, they're all over these trees and they're also in the Cavalry tree. And Backshear's um, Foundation ability also gives him Rage. So it is something that's very, very powerful when you're playing a hero like Backshear. Now, in every scenario, I would consider going this uh, for sure on Backshear, no matter if you're running the Cavalry Tree full or you're running the Skill Tree. Uh, but, you know, the other option here is not terrible. It's just really very low amount of rage for a point here. Um, here is the other place I would go for if you're going to full skill, meaning that you are going to do more damage when you do hero skill. So it's just additional. 60 is very low, but this is not as good because this effect lasts until battle ends. When you're playing Cav, you're going to be running in and out all the time. Uh, so you're not going to be in a battle forever. Unless you are doing a PvE Behemoth fight, this would be by far better, of course. Now, for the Cavalry Tree, of course, it's the same Cavalry Tree as Emrys. Um, there's obviously really good movement speed here. And there's obviously more uh, regeneration here. So if you were going full skill with your back shear, you would be then going uh, to the first node here uh, with the Cavalry Tree. And basically, uh, this one, in my opinion, is the best. Again, hero skill damage. When entering battle, you gain 15% damage for 10 seconds for your skills, uh, which works perfectly well with the skill talent tree that we just looked at. And of course, as I said, calves are in and out a lot. So this, you go in, you have this buff 10 seconds, then you go out because you've killed the march or you're getting attacked by 20 marches and you want to run it back and then back in again. So this is absolutely insane. Um, in my opinion, I would go for the skill tree here and then I would go for this one first and then you could max out one of the trees as you want because, you know, this tree also is really not bad at all. Uh, this one reduces the march speed of enemies, which can be very good to chase down stragglers or if you have a strong account, for example. And this one deals, you know, more physical damage. So kind of like the skill one we saw earlier, uh, this one's actually uh, better but it has a cooldown on how many times it can be triggered. Uh, so, you know, it is very hard to go wrong. You really just want to get this, and then you want to get the skill tree that's here that gives more damage to the PD by 8%. Uh, it, they are just too powerful not to get, in my opinion. And then you can mix and match depending on where you want to go. You know, here you can do more skill damage. Here you can get more rage. Uh, it all depends. Of course, I'm still testing on my trees and stuff, so I'm not having a final build here but it is still early in the season for anyone who's been playing since the game launched. So it is going to be things that you're going to have to test out and see what works depending on what you have, artifacts and all that kind of stuff, uh, because it will make an impact. Now, speaking about artifacts for Backshear, uh, the same as any other artifacts for Cavalry, uh, this Kingslayer is by far the best artifact in the game for Cavs. Uh, there's nothing close to it. It deals damage to five enemies. It's huge damage. Um, also, it has attack on it, which is what you want when you're aggressive. Uh, second, you can go for Soren's Blade, which does, you know, similar, but just to two targets and has attack and march speed, which is also very, very good. Uh, they're both amazing. Uh, just this one is just not as much damage as uh, Kingslayer. And otherwise, of course, the Storm Arrow, which has very good uh, stats here. Again, attack, very good. Uh, but this one does no damage. It gives you a buff of 12% damage dealt. Well, it's very, very strong. Uh, but it's basically like a blink dagger. Like you can teleport to a small location. Uh, it's not bad at all. It's very good. I just, you know, it won't have the same damage potential as Kingslayer and the other ones, for example. And now, otherwise, you know, the only real uh, epic artifact here is Centaur Bow. 
Here it gives defense, which you know is not bad in PvP because defense is still a good stat when you're counterattacking or getting counterattacked, for example. But uh, it does a good amount of damage. You know, I have it uh, almost maxed out here. Um, I can basically max it out. So 1500 damage factor. Uh, it hits three targets. So very decent. Uh, just you no, know, not as good as the legendary, but very decent. And then if all else fails and you uh, don't have anything like this, there's also this, which is. Uh, you know, cav and defense here, attack and defense, and then uh, 800 damage factor. Uh, and then you have, you know, uh, more damage when your units are like obviously above 50%. So like, again, this can go, you know, to uh, a decent amount of damage, but it's really not insane. Like it's really not as good as the epic one and they're not as good as the legendary ones, of course, but they're all working decently. There is really nothing wrong with any of them. And uh, the last one to mention is this one. Um, this one is basically like the blink dagger thing. And then you can basically... Uh, blink somewhere and then blink back so it's very good because it gives you a lot of fun things to do a fun gameplay and the cooldown is 1 minute 30 which is short but it has hp here which is obviously not great uh, as much as attack is for example uh, but you know we can't really go wrong calves are about fun mobility uh, hit and run yeah, there's a lot of strategy involved so a lot of these artifacts can work in your favor depending on the way you want to play it so uh basically that's it about black she of course he is in my opinion the best cav hero in the game paired with emrys even if they're both 5 one, 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 they will do incredible amount of damage. But he is now a gold key hero, which means that, you know, you shouldn't be spending your universal sculptures on him um, if you can avoid it. Uh, because, you know, you will get him from... Uh, it says he'll still get him from Lucky Spin as well as the Tavern Chest. I don't know if this is true because this is new uh, and he used to only be on the Lucky Spin. Uh, but basically meaning that, you know, you should... like Unless your, your account is full cav and you really want to focus cav... Eventually, if you play this game long enough, you're going to get, you know, him from the golden chest over and over again. And you will be able to max him out, you know, for free, let's say, even though it's obviously not free. Uh, but, you know, he is a hero that works very well without being expertise. Uh, so unless you're a big spender, you know, you can just try and get him 5-1-1-1 and then use him from there. Because, you know, over time, you will be able to max him out while getting gold keys and stuff over the years. Uh, people who play the Rise of Kingdom know that you know you spend a lot of keys at the beginning for like the first heroes and then you end up like a year or two later and you have hundreds of their tokens extra because you unlocked it and you wish you hadn't spelled any of your universal ones that are now wasted basically uh, so obviously it's a choice here um he's also obviously peacekeeping which means that you can use him to farm peacekeeping uh, mobs and level him up quickly and get you know a little extra box that you get from the peacekeeping tree which is okay but Obviously, he's a much stronger hero to be using as a PvP hit and run high skill damage uh, beast because that is what he is. So guys, I hope this video was useful. If you have any question, of course, ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer and help you uh, if you have any question about him, the build, talents, or any kind of other stuff. As well as make sure to subscribe and watch my other Call of Dragons videos. Uh, I've been doing testing against peacekeepers on behemoths uh, as well as a lot of guides on different heroes, best artifacts and tips and mistakes to avoid stuff like that. So of course, if you're interested, make sure to check it out. And otherwise, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.